So you bought one of those solar panels and hooked it right to the battery. Found out that the, uh, you know, after a while, the acid got all over the place. The reason for that is the solar panels put out 22 volts, or more or less, depending on the solar manufacturer itself. So what you need to do is regulate the uh, voltage down to a manageable 13 volts to 14 volts, 13.2 uh, to 14.2, depending on who you read and what you want to believe, depending on what kind of batteries and everything else. So what I did is I made my own regulated circuit, and... Uh, Egg is out 13.55 in general. I use it for regular 12 volt battery charging. I have eight AA rechargeable batteries in series, and I just put here and here, and I can charge all those up. Those are charged already. I'm bringing back old batteries. The low current is excellent. Set it and forget it, and come back to it later, and it's it's charged. What it used was the uh, LM317 from Radio Shack and it has a uh, little schematic on the back that uh, is alright I redrew it so you can follow my changes or you can go directly with what they did and this is for the new guy that doesn't really know how to read a schematic much the old guy wiping his dusty old electronics off or whatever. So, <clears throat> old person. Uh, I'm going to start with his. Well, you need your PC part. So, you have your 317 voltage regulator. You have a schematic on the back. Now, the schematic on the back calls for a 0.1 microfarad capacitor, a 5K ohm potentiometer. A 240 ohm resistor right there, and another one microfarad uh, electrolytic capacitor, and that's what they're suggesting. Now this is a picture of a 317, and to follow the schematic, you kind of have to follow the numbers one, two, and three. But there's a chopped out version of that, so you gotta know that that. If you're looking at the 317, here's one on a circuit board on a little breadboard here okay anyways when you're looking at the schematic like that you are looking at the regulator in this direction here with the front facing you the back is right here okay that's the first thing no so you can understand that drawing a little better so the drawing it's pinned one two and three here if you're looking at it, it's one, two, three. Now, I made my circuit a little bit different. I didn't use electrolytic. I used the ceramic on both. As you can see, the circuit is working fine. I just hit the thing. The circuit is working fine. I used ceramic in both, and I used smaller size ceramic. As long as the voltage rating is high enough to handle the volts, the smaller ones are okay for the low current devices like this. I'm using 100 picofarad capacitors. So, and I'm only heat sinking with a clip. This is temporary. Eventually, I will go to a full heat sink like this. Um, <clears throat> you know, always heat sink your stuff. You know, here's another. I use the money clip for a heat sink here. As long as you're not shorting anything else, and it's touching the metal on the back. Good temporary stuff. You're okay until you build it permanently. Then make sure you do put the right heat sink in there. So, just know that. Now. They call for 5K potentiometer right there. That's 5,000 ohm. I used a 10K right here. And what you do is you adjust, when the circuit's all built, you adjust the uh, potentiometer here to your voltmeter on the end. And you get to the volt readings output that you want. When you have that, very carefully, take the potentiometer out like so and do an ohm reading across these two two leads here okay get an exact there and then you can use regular resistors to replace the potentiometer for example I, I, I found that about 
2,240 ohms was uh, what worked here. So I used a 2.2K, a 10 ohm, a 10 ohm, a 10 ohm, and a 10 ohm. Originally, I only had three 10 ohms in there, one, two, three, into the circuit. And my output was, eh, I didn't like it, so I added more resistance in there, okay? And that made the voltage go up a little better. It's only out like 13.2, I wanted about 13.5. The 10 ohms made that much of a difference. So it was easy to cut this circuit right here, add in a new resistor, and then uh, I just soldered it in real quick, and yeah, so it was done. So, now your capacitors, if you use ceramic capacitors, know that they can pretty much go in any direction when you put them in the circuit so that's okay there's no there's no um, no direct direction required when using an electrolytic here's an example of an electrolytic it actually has a negative on one side and a positive on the other side sorry about the sun getting in the way here so and you'd have to put those in specific negative towards negative positive positive use the bigger ones for higher amp but know this also that the LM317 can only handle 1.5 amps of power going through. So you can hold up to about 15 watts of input. So, so what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll show my drawing compared to their drawing. And my, uh, I, like I said, I drew the whole thing. If you're going to look at this right here. And here it is, you'd be looking at it exactly like this. Okay. Back is away from you. There's in, out, adjust, right there. Now this is good for, you can also do this for, you know, charging 6 volt batteries and uh, 3 volt, 1.5 volts. You can make it for whatever, and you can make it permanent. Or you can leave the potentiometer in there and, you know, constantly measure your output. So... That's entirely up to you, but I do have a lot of 12 volt batteries. I, I'm always constantly charging. Um, all right, so we'll go with the. So my circuit looks like this: solar panel. I'm going into the input. I'm using a 100 picofarad capacitor instead. I made permanent resistors right here. Once I had found out the output I needed over here, I went to permanent ones, tied those in. Now originally I thought three, but because I was working on the breadboard and there was different connections and stuff, when I actually went to solder and soldered the whole thing in, and the resistance was a little bit less, so I had to add resistance in. So that's why I said it's easier to just cut and add right into there. And that makes your adjustment right there by just simple 10 ohm resistors. So now I have four total here for, for what I wanted. Okay, and uh, now they also, like I said before, on theirs, they wanted a 240 ohm uh, R1. Well, they only had 220 on the shelves. So if you take a, a 10 and add it in series, which I did here, that was close enough after I ohmed the two together that I had uh, close to 240 ohms. And I added that, and that works fine. Uh, and then again, on the output, crossed it with a 100 picofarad instead of the uh, 0.1 microfarad they wanted. Low current with devices like this, you're fine. Solar panels, you're very stable with them anyways, so you're okay. So I'll just go with this. It's a real simple circuit. It's a useful circuit. And... Uh, you can tell them all to your own solar panels you have that way. I'm going to go like this. Okay, and, and, and just know like the, the capacitors are marked on them. If you have a bunch of loose ones laying around, something like that, or whatever. You don't have bags and bags of them, whatever. They sell them in things. And 100 picofarad is marked 101 on it. see it or not, but it says 101 on it right there. Oh, sorry, the other side. There. 101. Okay. So 
Uh, you can get away with any numero in between when you're using the whole current like that. It's not a big deal. And again, like I said, here's the output. So now, let's see if I can hold the uh, meter on there. So, works well. Good luck. Sorry, I only have 10 minutes on these videos.